Thank you, everyone, for joining another episode of the Keystonian Corner. I'm Jolene Hale, and I'm here with my co-host, John Davidson. Hello, John. Hello, hello. Um, so today we have, uh, we're pretty excited. We have an interview that um, we met, uh, and we've talked several times about the vendors that we met at KetoCon. And so today we're going to do an interview, and we're super stoked about this one. This is Victor Macias. Hopefully I said that right, Victor. And he is from the Keto Cookie. Um, hello, Victor. Thanks for joining us. Oh, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm excited. Yeah. So, um, again, like I said, we had met Victor at KetoCon. Uh, him and his partner, Chris, are uh, young and um, very energetic business owners. And they have developed a... Um, company called Keto Cookie, and John and I both had the pleasure of testing those out at KetoCon, and I have to tell you, they were delicious. Yeah, and um, and as everyone knows, uh, just I am not a cookie person, so <laughs> I, I tend to love sweets, and I was like, oh, I don't even want to try it. So you actually had to, funny enough, you actually had to convince me. I to did. I, I was the pusher that day and, and made John try those cookies, so... Um, but we do uh, want to get started on our interview here with, with Victor. So, again, Victor, thank you so much for, for joining us. Um, yeah, and just a reminder, if you listen to, we, we did like that montage where we had a couple of different mini interviews from KyoCon. Keo Cookie was one of them. So that, right. that was a two, two, two-ish minute version. So this will be a little bit more in depth. So. So would you mind like kind of giving us a, your backstory, your uh, kind of how you came across keto when you started to to actually look at your nutrition, just kind of so everyone can kind of get a feel for how you found it? Yeah, of course. So um, I, I found um, keto actually uh, through my business partner, Chris started first. So initially we, um, we were big fans of the Tim Ferriss podcast. And there was a, a gentleman by the name of Dominic Diagostino. Who yeah, I think wrestler. I have a small male crush on him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's like the real life Incredible Hulk. Oh, like, like <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, if you've More ever seen pictures of him. Um, <laughs> so he was talking about the benefits, and Chris had just gotten back from his honeymoon and uh, had gained some weight, and he, he tried it. For him, the drive was more of, of the effects like on energy and on mood. And, and uh, Chris told the story of how he was a, a chronic napper. Uh, and he tried this, and the need to nap went away. So it appealed to me um, for at first it was for the uh, potential fat loss. So I was a kid in high school who would get excited and brag that I could eat a whole pizza and nothing would happen, right? I wouldn't gain any weight. And then college came, and then beer. And... I just, I, I ballooned, I gained a ton of weight and starting the ketogenic diet, I've lost so far a little over 40 pounds and it's the easiest I've ever lost weight, the fastest that it's melted off. And so it worked from that, like, oh wow, what's going on? But be, besides that, it was, wow, I have, my mood is great. I have uh, this energy that I can keep going. I have two kids at home. I have uh, you know, business endeavors and I can just go and go and go and go. And I was hooked. So how long ago did you start this, Victor? So um, Keto Cookie is about uh, a, a little over a year. So we started Keto about, I'd say about two or three months before um, starting Keto Cookie. And that came more out of like fulfilling our own need. So Chris and I used to meet uh, for coffee because we have our own uh, separate companies and it gets lonely as an entrepreneur <laughs> and we would, we would meet up for coffee and um, we were on the diet by that time. We're like, you know what's really missing though? We want something sweet. We want, we want a dessert, like a cookie. So we went into Chris's mom's kitchen <laughs> and threw on some aprons and started trying to make cookies that fit the macros of being on a ketogenic diet. And that's where um, the, the first the first run of cookies were born. And so, are all of your cookies um, keto friendly? Then, yes, all of them. They are. Um, so each pouch has two cookies, and they're about three grams of net carbs for two, so about one and a half 
each, and they're very high fat with high quality. You know, we use grass fed butter, almond butter, coconut oil. Oh, it, it, we created for ourselves, so it was ingredients that we would want. Uh, thing only thing that we we would be happy eating ourselves. So you ripped through those ingredients pretty fast to get the fat content up. What 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 did you what did you add? You said uh, coconut oil, but what what, were, what else was it? So okay, so the makeup of our cookies is almond flour, coconut flour, then uh, grass fed butter, almond butter, coconut oil. MCT oil, and we use uh, we sweeten with monk fruit and um, erythritol. Gotcha. So a little bit of sugar alcohol, but a little bit of uh, of uh, nat- natural sugar also. Which in that in monk fruit, for those of you guys, just a quick reminder is one of the really low um, impacts to your blood sugar. Yep. Definitely, and we can talk about it later. But we tested it. We ate nothing but cookies for <laughs> we ate sixteen cookies a day for seven days as a as a, as an experiment, and um, learned a lot about ourselves during that time. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Okay, you you can't talk about that later. You got to talk about that now. So, so were you like measuring your blood sugar and measuring like your ketones, or or how, how did this experiment go down? Okay, so so we we Chris and I wanted to put our our product to the test, so. About two weeks before trying this crazy experiment, we went off of keto. And, I mean, we, like, jumped off the wagon. We ate, like, garbage. And it's one. It's like that. If you ever watch, like, TV shows where the little kid's caught smoking a cigarette and his parents fo- force him to smoke a whole pack and he never wants to see a cigarette again, it right. was like that. Like, I, I just I, – I couldn't – I hated the way I felt. Um, and so we decided to try this experiment, and it was seven days of eating only keto cookies – water and coffee and we chose 16 cookies uh because it was uh, around 1800 calories so we didn't want the reason that we lost the weight to be just calorie restriction yeah, um, so, and at, so yeah, 18 would be around your standing metabolic rate exactly exactly and um so we were definitely out of ketosis when we when we started and um Chris and I both had different strategies uh, as to what we would do. Uh, initially, my goal was I'm going to front load all these. I'm going to eat as many as I can for breakfast and then just face the rest out. And Chris was like, all right, I'm just going to eat one like every a couple, like every two hours and see what happens. And um, as much as I love our product, as much as I love our cookie, palate fatigue set in by about day three. Um, but <laughs> But the interesting thing was, I, I immediately noticed, so mentally is where I started noticing the biggest difference. So the sense of calm, right? The anxiety that I had was just, was, I was just more relaxed. Uh, mental clarity, people people talk about it, but for me, mental clarity was like my thoughts connected and they, they almost like shot faster. And by day five, we tested our blood just to make sure um, you know, I had never used like a precision uh, X or extra, which is the one where you, you take blood. Uh, Chris and I, and we filmed it. It's on YouTube. So we have the whole thing up there. Um, it's a keto cookie diet and um, got blood and I tested at 2.8 uh, millimolar and Chris was 3.1. And that was by day five of eating nothing but keto cookies. And I mean, we were living our, our life normally trying to do everything as we normally would, except only eating keto cookies and some electrolytes as well. Is this where you do the disclaimer? Please don't try this at home. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. We. It was only. It was merely a test, and not something that we that we uh, were encouraging people to do. But it was. It was fun to see that eating just our cookies, and again, not a claim, but we were able to get into ketosis, which was which is pretty pretty wild. That is great. The keto cookie diet. Well, you'll have to you'll have to we'll have to make sure we include a link to that in the show notes because that sounds like some something that would be interesting. So we've used precision. We've talked about that as a blood meter. Um, we're not, we're not, we, we've talked about measuring your blood and everything, but so those numbers are, are pretty, pretty significant uh, when it comes to, to ketones. So that's, did you have any distress um, or revolving around the amount of sugar alcohol you were consuming at that point? Then? <laughs> um, no, that, that, that's a great, that's a great question. And these are things where at first we were, yeah, I mean, we were concerned because 
you know, 16 cookies a day, it, the, the, the sugar alcohol stacks up. And I know depending on the type, some people's uh, tolerance level is different, but uh, didn't feel, didn't feel anything. I mean, it's it, perhaps it's the type, you know, we, we chose erythritol uh, uh, on purpose, but I mean, I, I didn't feel any adverse effects. Uh, and I know Chris didn't, uh, cause we were meeting up every day to, to document and like do some video stuff. And no, I mean, what did happen to me, was I hit keto flu and I'm sure you guys have talked about it before, but I hit keto flu by about day, the end of day two. And what I, where I messed up was I underestimated the amount of salt that I needed, uh, in my diet. So Chris, uh, you know, had his, his sea salt, he was putting it in his water and I was just drinking water and, and it, it hit me. I feel, I felt like I got hit by a Mack truck until the next day where I started adding more salt. Um, and I started, there's these, um, there, I think it's called NUN or N-U-U-N tablets, which there's no sugar added. And I dropped that into my water and the difference was night and day. Yeah, we have talked about that a little bit. And, and I'm guessing it had you not went so drastic with your, <laughs> with your yes. prep, all that prep, uh, you probably wouldn't have been as bad. Um, so I, I did, I did uh, jump out to YouTube and I found the video you're talking about. So we'll make sure we include that in the show notes because that, that's a, that, that sounds like a, a well, well, uh, well worth the 12, 12 minutes to take a look at it. So just to kind of pull it back to the, to the product, the other thing that you you said you're using a lot of is your um, almond flour. Um, is, is that pretty much the base Kind of, uh, how do I want to say, is that how you derive the texture? Because I felt like, uh, and I, I'm coming from the person who doesn't do a lot of this, right, the the actual desserts, but I felt like your texture did not feel like it was almond flour. Does that make, does that question make sense? How did you no, make them feel like <laughs> Well, um, it's a combination excuse me, it's a combination of almond flour and coconut flour. So it has something to do with, with that, as well as, I'm sure just the amount of, of fat in there really, uh, really helps. But in terms of the base, yeah, it was almond flour, but I, I really believe it's the combination of the almond and coconut flour that, that add to that texture. Yeah, that was the one thing that I really noticed, because I've done quite a lot of baking, um, my husband was a big sweet eater, so in the beginning, I was trying to replicate a lot of that stuff, and that was the one thing that I found is that it the texture was off. It was just strange, but with your cookies, I would not have known that they were keto cookies if I hadn't been told that, so they they are really phenomenal. Thank you. No, that means a lot. I remember that the first um, conference we went to, we had a booth, and people were actively avoiding our booth, <laughs> so they were looking... And, and they'd be like, okay, you know, uh, desserts for one, right. They'd stay away. But two is they would taste them, expecting them to taste like healthy cookies. And, and when they tasted them, they're like, wow, they, they taste like just delicious cookies. I think it worked to our benefit. Um, so yeah, that's definitely something that in the beginning, uh, actually worked at, worked as an advantage just because people expected them to be so bad. Yeah, we really we really screwed up not getting with you ahead of time and and getting some so we could have people in the room try it. Yeah, <laughs> but 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 if you could circle back, so so uh, we've got quite a few people that are kind of new to keto and they've tried to find like alternatives to something. So put put those aprons back on back on in your mom's um, sorry not your your mom's kitchen but in the, back into the kitchen. How did you how did that trial and error go? Where like did you just go through 20 batches before you found like the right thing or can you just kind of walk us through your mindset of, around how you like develop your product? So I think one of the biggest differentiators was we worked since we don't have baking experience, we worked we worked backwards from what does a delicious cookie taste like? I think sometimes people will say, what does the healthy version of X taste like and how do I replicate it? So we were like, what makes a good cookie? And we, reverse engineered it and swapped out certain things that would one had quality ingredients, but two, you know, fit within the ketogenic diet. So a lot of it was, was research. Okay. What can we have that's keto? And then what makes a good cookie? And then it was 
it was just small iterations. I, I think it was like between 35 and 40 versions until we got what we liked. And even then we weren't hundred percent sure people were going to like it. And that's when we threw up a, like a simple test website to see if anybody would even buy. And initially we got five people, then 20, then 30. And we realized there was something there. We were still buying all of our ingredients retail. So we were actually losing on every batch, but it was showing us that, that people actually liked them and were willing to purchase. So you went basically the route of creating a test product and doing some samples. So you're willing to pay, lose a little money on the cookies, but you're, you're trying to prove out that what you thought is actually true, that people do like it. So that's 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 very uh, very lean startup of you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, definitely. That, that was that was the philosophy. Was the MVP, get it out, it, it, it test it as soon as possible, and yeah, work from there. So um, I'm I'm curious, and this uh, if this is proprietary, please stop me. But how in the how do you add the MTC oil to the cookies? Is it is you just mix it like a normal wet ingredient? Because I've never. It's rare that I see somebody say that they have MTC um, in, a, in a product where it's not obvious. Yours is definitely not obvious. Um, yeah, no. Um, so we we have a lot of fats. So we just include it um, in the process where we mix the fats together. So it's okay. so it's just like any other fat. No. You can, all right. I'm just that, that's awesome. That, so how does that how does that compare? Well, there's a lot of keto products coming on the market, and I'm, to be transparent, pretty, uh, I don't know, gun shy revolving around uh, anything that you could buy, like pre packaged and everything like that. So, yep. how did you kind of put yourselves up against these other keto businesses that kind of have these, um, I don't know, I don't want to say marginal products, but, you know, how do you, how do you try to differentiate yourself then? You no, know, that that's a great <clears throat> a great question, and I'd say a few ways. Um, I think one of the reasons why people like keto cookie, besides the taste of the product, is because we Chris and I try to be very authentic. So since the beginning, when we were just finding people to test the product, we've always been very vulnerable and shared where we were coming from. We've shared the struggles, we've shared the good and the bad. And people have stood have stood by us. I mean, even even uh, now, a couple of weeks ago, we got a shout out on the Joe Rogan podcast, and which really helped a lot in terms of orders. But it also put us behind a few weeks. And we created a video, we posted it on Instagram, and we emailed our followers saying, "Hey, you know, if you guys want a refund, we completely understand, but we're behind." And ninety something percent said, "We'll wait as long as it takes." Like, wow, okay. So I think on one end, people connect with us. On, on, on another end is we're, we're trying to create a delicious product. So our goal is to trick people into eating healthy. And an, another part of it is we didn't really worry too much about the competition. And I know it sounds kind of cliche to say, but we, we try to be very proactive and very intentional in what we do. So every step was, what do we think is best? How do we operate out of love versus fear? And how do we just provide value? And it's, I mean, it's, it's work. Compared to other business ventures, this is the one that's been the most, I don't want to use the word effortless, but the one that's, that's kind of guiding us versus feeling like we're having to push a pill. You know? So you had these other businesses or these other companies that you're – you're doing, and is this is this now consuming more and more of your time as you get more excited about it, or how's that oh, split yeah. in your? Yeah, the split now is eighty twenty. This is eighty percent of my time. Um, this the keto cookie is 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 something I can say is bigger than ourselves. So the the main the kind of inflection point when that happened was we were at a at Low Carb USA uh, in San Diego about a year ago. And a gentleman comes to our table um, by the name of Artie Dykeman. He's uh, got glasses, bald, jacked, and he says, you guys are my heroes. And we're like, what? He's like, my son has type 1 diabetes, and because of you guys, I can now put a cookie in his lunchbox. We're like, whoa, okay. Um, this, this, this is, again, bigger than ourselves. We have the opportunity to affect people. In, in these ways, people have, you know, they show their blood glucose monitors and they show barely a, a spike. 
you know, and it's allowing people to not feel deprived. It's allowing them to stick to their diet if they feel like cheating. It's allowing them to transition onto the diet. So that's why it's, it's the 80%. I'm sure pretty soon it'll be 100%, but this is my it's it's my passion and it's something again bigger than than ourselves well it, it definitely shows in just meeting you guys in person you're you're uh it's contagious your excitement is contagious i guess yeah. so so as you're growing um is it just is it now growing to more than just you two or oh uh, yeah yeah it's funny uh chris and i like to do a lot of um a lot of reflection we just took a a trip to San Francisco. Uh, we just finished up a Kickstarter campaign and we promised ourselves that after that campaign, we'd take a week to kind of get away, but really plan the next phase of, of this. And um, we did take some time to reflect. We're now a team of 11 people. So we have, um, you know, it was us in the beginning making them in Chris's mom's kitchen and then uh, moved to a, another kitchen where we'd pay by the hour and then finally renting a, a portion of a commercial kitchen to now potentially having to get our own kitchen and having a, a production manager and a production team so we can actually focus on the the growth on the marketing side of the business so yeah we've grown from about two to 11 people in uh, a year it's been great wow that's that's pretty impressive so you're doing this reflection You've made, you have how many cookies, uh, was it four or five? Where, how many, we, uh, where are the flavors? Yeah, so we have um, five flavors. Two of them were exclusive to Kickstarter, and um, in a couple of weeks they're going to be available on the site. Chocolate chip, double chocolate, snickerdoodle, peanut butter, and birthday cake. All right, so now what's next then? <laughs> so, uh, and this question has been asked, um, there, you know, we've looked at potentially expanding product lines, but we, we really want to focus and, and master this specific vertical, right? We want to, once we know that, that we've done the best we can do in cookies, then we're going to look at other options. I think a danger that a lot of companies fall into is they get very excited, business starts to grow, and then they want to put their name on everything. All right, well, now let's do gym bags, and now let's do our own MCT oil, and let's do this. And there's nothing wrong with that, but I just feel like it dilutes the message. You know, this is our core, and we want to make sure we do this right before and build that trust, that authority, so that when we do expand, if we do decide to expand in another direction, we'll have people's trust. So that sounds like a some pretty good advice to somebody who's trying to start like a small business. What el what else have you learned through this year and a half that that maybe maybe like uh, one of us could kind of pick up lessons learned or something like that if we're wanting to start something or we're just wanting to help other people. Oh yeah, definitely. So in addition to business growing, it's also been the most uncomfortable I've ever been in my life. I I've faced the most fear and the most anxiety and that's because that's the only way you grow so every day um before i start my day i make a list of the, my three mit's most important tasks um which are usually the scariest ones on my list or the ones that'll make the most impact which usually are the same and i knock those out before checking email social media or anything else and you know I believe being an entrepreneur is just more of mastering your emotions. <laughs> and if you're able to really look at what frightens you or what puts you out of your comfort zone, a lot of times that's the answer. So that, and then I'd say the ability to focus and by focusing, it's pretty much blocking out distractions, you know, staying true to the task that you're doing, but as well as, you know, like we're trying to focus by just staying with cookies, it's pick something and, and try a one month sprint where you only do that one thing or a three month sprint if you can and just block out everything else uh, and, and you'll, you'll get a lot of traction and you'll make a big difference. Um, so those are just some quick takeaways uh, based on what I've learned so far. Yeah, the, that do, the, do your three top items before anything else, a pretty common theme and fantastic advice. I, I do my best to try to do that. It doesn't work out so well, but yeah. <laughs> we're all human. It's good. In the corporate world, um, email and walk-ups sometimes can trump everything. 
So, so nutrition seems pretty important to you. How has now you've got yourself in a situation where you got a couple of years under your belt and it, your time has just been sucked away by your excitement of this new venture? How's that impacted your nutrition of your, you know, it's oh yeah, the thing you can do for your health is starting a company. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> um, <clears throat> so. I guess one of the things is it's good to be in this space, right? You're going to these events. It's like these conferences or these cruises are the only place where you go and actually lose weight when you're there. Um, but it, it, it's, I've seen the addiction now is not really the weight loss as much. I do have specific um, like body fat percentage goals that I want to get to, but it's more of how I feel. And I've, I knew that in theory before. But it wasn't until I really felt it, especially with keto. Like there's there's no way that that I could do everything that I'm trying to do and not be in keto. Like like, the, and I can tell when I transition in, and I can tell when I transition out. So so that is like a short term kind of goal. So if if I'm ever out of ketosis for some reason, um, within a day or two I'm back in, and and I've got that sprint until I'm back in. And it helps. And, and the cool thing is it's addicting. So now that I've got this, uh, like um, my health that I'm working on improving, I'm trying to do some other like biohacking stuff. You know, can I, you know, try some lion's mane in my coffee and, and optimize my mental performance? It just becomes a game where you're always trying to kind of level up and improve. Yeah, you do like Tim Ferriss. <laughs> very, very much so. <laughs> so. So you're definitely a four hour, four hour body guy. So do you do you do the gym then? Um, I do, and but I so um, I don't have as much time, right? And I know that's a common excuse. Um, but what I do do is I own a, a couple kettlebells, and if yeah. I can't go to the gym, I really do about seventy-five kettlebell swings, and I notice a big difference. Something that I'm Four experimenting with. Yep. Now that I'm experimenting. <laughs> I love that book. Something I'm experimenting <laughs> with is, uh, is front loading uh, my gym sessions too. So, it, it, doing them in the morning before starting anything else, even if it means starting my day a little later, it's uh, it, it, my type A is having a hard time because I, maybe I'm not starting as early as I want in terms of, of getting work done. But that's a way that I can guarantee that I go to the gym. So, just something I'm experimenting with. Right, but but just doing the small bout of kettlebell swings is enough to get your heart kind of pumping, and then enough to get you kind of. Uh, I, I guess I would say because I, I I've actually done that before too. If I'm especially in a hotel room or something where I just need a super fast workout in the morning, that or some type of hit sprints or something fast, it's it's amazing how how much of a difference that can make with such a small period of time. It, it does, it, and, it, and it builds momentum too. So if if it's been a couple of days since I've gone, even if I'm just, I, I kind of try to trick myself. So I'll say, you know, I'm just gonna do ten kettlebell swings. I never do just ten, you know. Or I'll say, it's even been to the point where I'll say, I'm just gonna drive up to the gym parking lot and park. If I get there, I'm successful. <laughs> and just getting there is enough to get me to go inside. And then I finish that first workout, and then the next are much, much easier. Yeah, I, I feel kind of the same way. There's a, every once in a while when I'm not feeling, or like I feel like I'm starting to come out with a cold. I'm like, I'll just go to the gym and sit in the sauna. But, you know, you never stay in the sauna. You always, <laughs> you know, I, or at least I always get out there and do something. So, All right, so I started monopolizing the conversation. I'm sorry. That's okay. That's okay. Um, so, Victor, you did mention um, – that you and Chris both have family. So is everybody in the family on keto or are you guys um, the only ones in the family doing this? Um, so in my family, I've gotten my two of my brother-in-laws on, no, three of my brother-in-laws on keto. They've all lost uh, a ton of weight. My dad, who's 53, he's always been like, he's always gone to the, him and my mom have always gone to the gym and tried to eat well. I got him on keto. It's been a few months. My dad's jacked. <laughs> he is like the leanest he's ever been. He feels energetic. He just started intermittent fasting. And he's like, because he's like, yeah, sometimes I'm eating, but I'm not hungry. I'm like, yeah, that's a sign. Like only eat when you're hungry. And 
notice a big difference. Um, my wife isn't keto, but something that we have done with my, I have a, a four month old son and I have a, a two year, eight month old daughter and we didn't give her any, uh, sugar until she was two. And I noticed that her palate changes. She chooses broccoli. If she ever has like a lollipop, she licks it like once or twice and then doesn't want it. So kind of trying that, I'm not going to, you know, have my daughter or at least not try to force that on her um, now, but just little things like cutting out the sugar. Um, I've seen big differences in her compared to how maybe some of her uh, cousins or friends um, react when they're around candy and sugar. It's amazing. I mean, my daughter, very similar situation. We didn't give her any, any sugar or anything until until she went to preschool and got stupid treats at school. So maybe I need to maybe I need to invest in the cookies and send those with her and she's they're giving her junk. <clears throat> because it is it is amazing how much different the kids are when they had that versus not. And Halloween last night was painful. Because <laughs> I yeah. wanted you want to take them trick or treating, but it's like we get these little small things and we tell them even if they offer more than one piece of candy, don't take it. And it's it's a it's a challenge. Oh, yeah. I, you know, something that, that my wife's done that I thought was really smart is um, we we let our daughter, even if it's like birthday parties, uh, we have a huge family and she gets candy. Is She uses them to barter. Say, okay, great. Look, look at all these candy. Um, how about we trade? Okay, so do you want this Play-Doh? It's going to cost you 10 pieces of candy. Do you want this coloring book? So almost looking at candy as currency and, <laughs> and kind of swapping it out. That's really, that's been fun and, and it works. Yeah, uh, we, we've done the we've done the Play-Doh and stuff. Uh, and actually, believe it or not, I, I, I do think that, that that a lot of stuff is more much more available than it used to be. I mean, we had the, I mean we were able to get Play-Doh to, to give away with instead of candy for some of the stuff. And that those type of uh, I guess trinket gifts as opposed to the for the trick or treating is is a lot more popular now than it used to be. But it's still, it's still very tough when you have children to try to. We want them to make that decision for themselves. And at some point, you know, that it is like crack. Yeah, it, it is. It, but at the same time, you don't want to restrict and control everything where they develop, uh, you know, food issues <laughs> when they get older. It's like, how do you strike that balance? I'm still trying to figure it out. Yeah. So, so do you find that your wife then, because of the way you and your kids are, she find that she just eats lots and lots of, well, I should say less processed stuff, less sugar. And then she ends up being somewhere in the middle. She's not doesn't give herself that keto, um, you know, badge, but she ends up eating healthier just because of the of everything else in the family. It, it definitely it just just being in that environment. And I never try to force it on anybody, but it's just um, you know we've seen we found the most powerful way to to inspire people is just to be that billboard yourself, be that walking inspiration. So she sees the weight I've lost. I don't have to tell anybody anything and I have aunts and uncles now they're like oh my god what are you doing how do I get involved and it's just a simple act of how I look now compared to how I did and how I feel and yeah her behavior has changed uh, definitely because of that that's a, that's the best way of saying we've talked about that before the lead by example is a lot better than trying to convince somebody to do something or you could be like me and just you know I bribed my husband with ribeye to start doing it with me <laughs> thank you guys look yeah, you got to find out, I guess, what the, what their trigger points are. So, um, um, I, no, nobody that we have everybody muted. So I, I know nobody's uh, put popped in any questions. But this is your last call for questions. If I'm, I'm happy to repeat them if you put them in the chat. But as we start to to wrap up, I know we're running out of time. Uh, you, is there any any topics that we kind of glanced and you want to come back to, or anything that you want to add? Um, I, I guess. More of of uh, of talking about how keto is is evolving and I think becoming bigger. It, it, I keep using the word bigger than ourselves, but being going to that conference where we met you, it, the keto community is so interesting compared to other communities that there's so much love and support. Like I think that people just want to grow the space together, you know. And, and we're trying to find the right messaging to get people to buy in again, trying to trick people uh, into eating healthy with, with cookies is a good starting point. But at the same time, you know, how do we um, inspire people to try, you know, that, that maybe 
if you're telling somebody the word keto, they're like, okay, we'll explain. It's going to be hard. But if you just talk about, you know, cutting back on sugar. So I, I recently, when we were at that conference in Austin, I have an uncle that lives close by. And again, they saw that I'd lost uh, this weight. And I, I talked to him about keto a little bit, but when I just said, look, just try cutting out some sugar, whatever you're eating now, eat half and see how you feel. He did it and he's down like 12 pounds. And now he's like, okay, great. This works. So what's the yellow belt? What's the black belt? You know, how do I improve? So it's like, how do we inspire people even just to start? And, you know, that's something that we're actively always trying to figure out over at Keto Cookie is how do we inspire change and what's the smallest step people can take to really move forward? Small actionable habits, build them. Exactly. All right, so we didn't get any questions, so uh, nothing, no one in the room. So uh, we'll just go ahead and kind of wrap it up with just, uh, I guess, I guess the the um, the amount of time we spend kind of thinking about what we can't do and why we can't do things. Uh, I really appreciate the fact that you guys are trying to break down some of those barriers. So just try to try to think like your like your, 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 the, per, the advice you gave him, just cut the sugar in half. Like any of those small changes that you can make, you don't have to go 100% one direction right away. Just try to make actionable steps in the right direction. And I, and I think that if we keep doing that and keep supporting each other, I can't, I can't help but think that we are, we're definitely making some, some progress to just feeling better about ourselves and feeling healthier. So anything you want to add? I think yeah. you guys covered it. All right. Well, we will uh, be. I think this uh, the show will come out on Friday. So for those of you guys who are in, and then for those of you guys who I, I was gone over holiday. Uh, the la I thought the last show was great. You guys did, did good on meal prep and everything. So uh, kudos to Javier for stepping in, my, filling my shoes. So, um, so Friday we'll have links to the show. Um, I've got I've got the the YouTube, and we'll have a link to your website. And then if you sent the social media stuff uh, over, I, I I don't do social media. So I got you. Put up. <laughs> she got you put up. <laughs> All right. Thanks, thanks everybody for calling in. And uh, again, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, to post them out on uh, out on the uh, website. Yep. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Oh, uh. <laughs>